These days, almost everyone takes some kind of computer away with them in their caravan or motorhome, even if it's just a smartphone or tablet. But what if you want or need to do more than just some basic internet surfing and emails? Then you may want to consider better options. Hi, it's Dave T here, and we've had caravans for over 20 years, and for a fair proportion of that time, I've either wanted or needed to use a computer for more than just a few casual minutes. Whether it was developing software, writing a couple of books, and of course, editing videos like this one, I've spent hours in the caravan using computers, and over that time found what does and doesn't work for me. So with all of that said, here's a rundown of technical and non-technical ideas for working on any type of computer whilst away in a caravan or motorhome. I'll start with the most ubiquitous option which almost everyone will have and already use which is of course smartphones. These are great for simple tasks such as emails, web browsing, social media, watching videos or listening to music. If you want or need to do more on your phone then a decent smartphone can actually perform more complex tasks such as office work like word processing and spreadsheets or even fairly basic photo and video editing. To make your life easier you could consider getting a Bluetooth keyboard which has two advantages Advantages. The first is that as a keyboard it is physically bigger so easier to type on. That's especially good if God has gifted you with larger hands than the average grizzly bear. Perhaps more importantly is that there's then more screen space will be available to see what you're actually working on rather than taking up most of the screen with the actual keyboard on screen. Along similar lines if you have a TV in the van then you can sometimes cast your mobile screen to the TV for watching movies etc. And you can get devices relatively cheaply for doing this such as a Chromecast. Advantages of mobile phones are the built-in internet connection, wide variety of charging options, portability of course and the likelihood that whilst not cheap it will be something you probably already have. The disadvantages are that you will of course be limited to mobile apps and of course the limited screen size. Now if you're planning to do more than occasional computer work while in the van then a tablet is a better option than a mobile phone. Their main advantage is the screen size and just as with phones you can get Bluetooth keyboards to improve typing. They can provide more performance depending on which model you go for, but unlike phones they are not guaranteed to come with a connection to the internet unless you buy a 4G or 5G enabled tablet and then of course with that you'll also have to purchase some kind of internet contract, mobile phone contract for the tablet. You can of course connect the internet by tethering to your phone or other nearby Wi-Fi and please do check out my video on Wi-Fi options for caravans and motorhomes. From an ergonomic perspective, especially with larger tablets, it's probably worth investing in a stand of some form if you will actually be using it for long periods. Advantages are increased screen size while still very portable, easily charged, though some more powerful models may charge very slowly from a standard van type USB port. Disadvantages are cost versus performance and options are very limited if you require something very powerful. Also, like smartphones, they are limited to iOS and Android apps. Laptops are of course the most obvious option if you require a more powerful machine or if you need to run applications designed for desktop operating systems such as Windows or Mac OS. Whilst you will never match the most powerful desktop computer, you can still get some very powerful laptops, though unfortunately that power comes at a premium cost. You do of course get a keyboard and there are a wide range of screen sizes available. I've used laptops in caravans for years and from an ergonomic perspective, the combination of caravan layouts and laptops, especially for an abnormally sized human, are, well, less than perfect. For this reason, I would highly recommend purchasing a stand which raises the screen to a more neck friendly height and a wireless keyboard and a mouse to improve both ergonomics and efficiency. What I would definitely recommend avoiding is using a laptop whilst placed on any soft furnishing. Laptops, especially powerful ones, consume a fair amount of energy and most of this power comes out as heat. This is dissipated by fans which means putting a laptop on soft furnishings can either block air going in or out or worse still suck in fluff. The advantages of laptops are that they are self-sufficient with keyboards, screen and battery all in one. They will run pretty much any software you will need and are powerful enough to run all but the most performance hungry applications. The disadvantages are the cost to performance ratio and poor ergonomics for serious usage. 
Also, charging from 12 volt supply may be a challenge with some models. Now, the idea of taking a full PC away in a caravan or motorhome may at first sound ridiculous, but actually there is perhaps more sense to it than you may think. One of the costs and limitations of all of the solutions so far is screen size, but most caravan and motorhome users will typically already have a TV in their van. With most laptops and computers now using HDMI cables to connect to monitors, this means that there is likely a decent sized screen already taking up space and weight in your van. One point to note is that not all TVs are full HD and to get the best use of any computer, you really need a full HD screen with a resolution of at least 1920 by 1080. Our old Cello TV was HD ready, so was not really compatible with computer resolutions. Since we would never watch TV in the van, choosing instead to watch DVDs or streaming services, we upgraded it to a basic computer monitor. This was only about 70 quid and had an external 12 volt power supply so was easily converted for 12 volt off-grid use using the old TV's 12 volt adapter. This gave us a full HD monitor that was much better quality than our old TV at a reasonable price. Though it's worth noting I'd made one mistake in that the monitor I bought didn't have a built-in speaker for sound. We use ours now via the stereo system in the van, which sounds better, but it's extra hassle. So if you're gonna go down that route, buy a monitor that also includes a speaker. Now, purchasing a decent laptop capable of editing 4K footage would have cost over a thousand pounds, but this UM790 Pro mini PC was almost half of that. A big part of the cost saving is that it doesn't have a screen or keyboard, but I was already using a Bluetooth keyboard and the new monitor is far larger than any laptop screen I'm likely to afford. Mini PCs are effectively the same as desktop computers, but scaled down. And when I say scaled down, I mean scaled down a lot. This mini PC is just five inches square and two inches tall. Like desktops, they can be upgraded and expanded. There are limitations to the upgrades, but they are not nearly as restricted as laptops. I've made a full review of the UM790 Pro on my new technology channel, and we'll link that above and in the description. There are lots of other mini PC options available, all of which will be a bit more expensive than an identical performance full-size PC, but still be a fraction of the cost of an equivalent laptop. You can, of course, use a laptop with your TV screen and a separate keyboard, but the size of the closed laptop then becomes more of an issue in the confined environment of a van. The UM790 Pro is powered by an external mains power supply, but also supports USB-C PD power input, so can be powered by any suitable USB D power supply that can deliver at least 65 watts or more. If you plan to be off-grid, then check the power supply options of any mini PC that you go for. 12 volt to 19 volt adapters are available, including adapters like this one, which will convert a USB D power supply to a correct voltage, but on a standard round jack. The advantages of mini PCs are better performance versus costs, more upgrade options and reduced size and weight, assuming you have a TV in the van. Ergonomically, they are offer the most comparable option to a conventional desktop setup. Disadvantages are that they are not suitable for ad hoc use in other locations, for example, whilst outside or traveling on a train. As you can see, the type of device you use in the van is very much dependent on two main factors, what work you will need to do and how much time you need to spend doing it. For simple tasks like browsing or occasional brief stints of work, you can generally get by with what you already have, or at least not have to spend too much buying something elaborate. If you need to do more demanding work, then laptops or mini PCs are probably the way to go. Laptops will be more versatile to use in different locations, but also more expensive. Mini PCs will give you more performance for the money, but are only usable at home or in the van where you have a monitor. If like me, you often spend more than an hour or so doing that sort of work, then investing in accessories to make your device more ergonomic will certainly pay dividends. Things like laptop stands, wireless keyboards and mice are all pretty low cost ways to make a big improvement on comfort. Personally, my new mini PC has given me a setup that is far more powerful and much more comfortable to use than my previous laptop arrangement. 
It also involves less clutter as with the addition of a cheap HDMI switch, I can actually leave it plugged in. So setup is purely a case of moving the monitor and getting the keyboard and mouse out. I'd be interested to know what different uses of computer devices you have when away in your van, so please do comment below, especially if you found other accessories or tricks to improve your van computer workspace. I'll put a link on the screen now for a review of that mini PC, but in the meantime, I hope you found this video helpful or interesting, and if you have, then please do hit that like button, and if you're interested in seeing other videos that I make, then please do subscribe to my channel. But most of all, thanks for watching.